guys, welcome to the show. This is the Arroyo Show. I'm Brandon Arroyo. If it's your first time here, please give it a thumbs up and a subscribe. What a guest we have for you today from so many shows that you guys want to check out. Our first guest you can see portraying the role of Courtney in Netflix's new thriller, Fatal Affair, starring Mia Long and Omar Epps, set for release on July the 16th. Welcome to the show, Maya Stoyan. How are you today? Hi, I'm doing great, great. Feeling good, you know? It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful Los Angeles day. How's everything going for you? Everything's good, you know, keeping busy during this time and trying to make the most of it and, you know, sort of during this slower time in our industry, trying to go inwards and, and trying to, you know, figure out what's important in life. Yeah, and even though it's a slower time, it's amazing that so many things are still releasing. Fatal Affair is sure. going to be releasing later this week. What will you remember the most about your time on this project when you look back at it? Good question. I think what I remember the most out of, you know, shooting this project is definitely the people involved. I think, you know, it was such a joy working with such talent as such as Mia Long and Omar Epps and, and they're they're just such, you know, rock stars and, and they just they're so inspiring. Just their their work and, and being able to collaborate with them. It just it just makes you a better actor, you know. And in the film, Nia Long's, uh, in the film Fatal Affair, Nia Long's Ellie tries to mend her marriage after an encounter with an old friend. However, she finds out that that friend is more dangerous and unstable than she'd realized. Maya, and on the line right now, portraying the role of Courtney in this film. Maya, let's talk about first dates. Do you have any particularly bad first dates that stand out to you? And uh, do you have any tips on what, make, what might make a really great first date? Okay, well... I do have a bad date for first date story. Uh oh, um, let's hear it. <laughs> Getting comfortable here. <laughs> so I I I had a first date with with this guy. It was probably like you know a couple years ago, and um, I I thought you know I looked really good. I felt really confident about myself, and he was kind of more of how do I put this nicely, <laughs> more of a like nerdy type, you know, like kind of tech type, and so I felt really confident. I was like, that's right, I'm you know. <laughs> Oh, no. um, and I'm usually not on first dates. So I'm super clumsy and I say the wrong things and, and whatnot. So anyway, we go on this coffee date and um, I'm feeling confident and I am oversharing and talking nonstop for at least 15 minutes. And he's just looking at me, staring and nodding. And I'm like, I am nailing this. And all of a sudden, 15 to 20 minutes in, he just goes, I'm so sorry, but I'm just going to have to stop you. Um, you have a giant booger. Oh, on your face no. and so i was talking this whole time super confident <laughs> so that was so i was mortified i i just it was the most embarrassing moment <laughs> hey, okay how right long there. did the and, date go after that moment like <laughs> um actually he was really sweet he didn't make me feel embarrassed at all he was just sort of like no worries like i ran off to the oh, side no. and he was like at a coffee shop and i just like quickly grabbed a tissue and i was like oh <laughs> um, but you know, it, it was fine. Like he, you know, we did have a second date, but it didn't, it didn't go far. Right. So. Well, shout out to all the nerds out there for giving us, uh, doing us proud and still being that nice gentleman in any, any situation there. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I'm a total nerd, so it's not even, you know, I'm just, I feel like I'm a nerd. I'm an undercover nerd. Yeah. Um, but yeah, <laughs> those are always the sweet part. Okay, so I got to ask you, what is the most nerdiest thing that you're a fan of, of, of all the things that you could think of? I mean, there's the Star Wars is out there. There's the Harry Potters. We got comic books. What is the nerd thing for you? You know, I, so growing up, I was a huge fan of Batman. And so I had posters of Batman all over my wall. And um, another nerdy thing about me is that I played Legos till I was about 15, Um so that's pretty nerdy, I think. Um, but yeah, like I was just like so into just, you know, building constructions and, and all of that. So I would say that those are the first two things that come to mind. But, but you know yeah. what? Those are probably two of the most awesome things to be nerdy about. Batman and Legos. I'm all for it. I <laughs> What so, can I say? So you have a very well-traveled family. Your dad's from Czech Republic. Your mom's from Sri Lanka, raised in Switzerland. Growing up, did you have much interest in entertainment as a career? And when did that first start coming along, those ideas? You know, I don't think I really... I think it was always 
in my subconscious because my sister and I loved Bay watching Baywatch. We would run home from school and watch Baywatch, and we thought, like, wow, one day we'll we'll come to Malibu in California, and you know, it, it just seemed like such a far off kind of concept. Just because in Switzerland, you know, you're in the middle of nowhere with cows, and you know, it's it just it didn't seem like a possibility. And um, I think I, want, I wanted to be an architect, hence the Legos. Um, but then, yeah, and I, I was also a really shy kid. So I think my mom took me and brought me into theater because I was shy. And then all of a sudden, I think that's when, you know, the bug sort of clicked. And I thought, well, you know, maybe I can sort of try my shot at this. And, and, and I, you know, it, it was a way for me to express myself in a different way. And it seemed like something that you dived into so quickly. You head to Connecticut for college. What are your first memories of arriving in the United States? And was there much of a culture shock at that point? And also, what were your parents' thoughts about you going across the Atlantic to head across for college? You know, I think I think my parents wanted me out. <laughs> I think I was such a I was such a mommy's girl, and and I was you know very attached to my mom, and she thought like let's let's get her out of the nest, and and I mean I was pretty adventurous, I, I you know so um, actually golf brought me to Connecticut. I was actually um, playing on the golf team there, so that that's also a nerdy thing, right? I mean. <laughs> um, so yeah, so golf got me there and, and yeah, I think, you know, I shortly after being in Connecticut, I, I think the biggest culture shock was probably just the food and, and just the consumption of everything. Like it's, you know, I, I remember seeing my first American mall and just being like, whoa, <laughs> like that's like 20 stores in Switzerland put into one and it just, it just. Um, that concept was just so mind blowing, but yeah, I, yeah, I would say that was probably the, the biggest, um, culture shock. All right. Well, it could be argued that we're living in the golden era of superhero movies and shows right now. They've never been more created on the scale that they're being created at this level right now, especially with the appeal just outside of the comic book community as a whole. You take on the role of Agent 33, Carolyn Palamas in Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. What are your original thoughts on being in a Marvel project? And when did you first get booked? Um, so, you know, <laughs> It was it was crazy because I, I I remember auditioning for the role and it was very secretive. I think that's that's the main thing with Marvel, right? They they hide everything and and so I auditioned and I almost forgot that I even auditioned for it. I, I you know a couple of days later I was like oh I guess I didn't get it and I think it was a week later I got a phone call and I was actually um, at work working at a at a casting office and. And someone, my, one of my friends knew the news before me, and she just said, oh, there's really bad news from agents and managers. And I was like, whoa, what happened? And so I, I got my agents and managers on the phone, and then they announced to me, like, you're going to be on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., you're going to be a Marvel character. And I just, I think I instantly burst out into tears because I was just <laughs> in such shock, and, and I was just so excited just you know, that world is so huge and, and it felt awesome. Yeah. Okay. So you get into the Marvel universe, which is obviously for anybody that has been, you know, anything sort of fandom for comic books and heroes, that's a huge thing. And when you're in the, the Marvel universe, it's in stone. Like your character is something that's a part of that universe forever. What did that mean to you to be a part of that Marvel extended universe, especially right now? I mean, I think you, you, put it perfectly it was it was a really big deal for me and I I think it's you know when people ask me you know what is your favorite accomplishment or, or something you know that that's that's meaningful that you've done and I I always say just like being in the Marvel world is so extraordinary to me and something that I never thought would ever be a possibility you know especially growing up in Switzerland in the middle of nowhere um where Baywatch was the, the dream come true <laughs> but um yeah I feel like really that was that was um extraordinary and, and spectacular and felt like a miracle she is Maya Stoy and you can see her portraying the role of Courtney in Netflix's new thriller Fatal Affair starring Neil Long and Omar Epps set for release on July the 16th before we start winding down the interview here we've got five questions left we call them the final five they are your who what when where and which for right now the first one being who do you speak with the most right now 
who do I speak with the most right now? Probably my boyfriend who I'm quarantined with. Normally I would say my mom because my mom and I talk every single day, but right now I would say probably my boyfriend. <laughs> what item do you use the most each day other than your phone or your computer? Probably my dog leash <laughs> for my dog. <laughs> uh oh, what kind of dog do we have? It's a Labradoodle. Oh, cute dog. Yeah, super cute. He's when really did you know that you wanted to be in entertainment full time? Full time? Um, probably when I was, oh boy, uh, 22, but maybe before, but it just sort of like, I didn't know if it would happen. And then I really started believing my, in myself, I think, in my, in my 20s, yeah. Where is your dream vacation? I think Greece. Um, just because I, I love, um, you know, Greek gods and, and like Greek theater and yeah, probably. And, and just the beaches look amazing, let's be honest. And then finally, which song is your go to for karaoke? You know, I don't really sing <laughs> karaoke, but I think, you know, I love I love singing Nora Jones, Alicia Keys. But those are not really like fun karaoke songs. I'll sort of like tag along. I've never I, I don't think I've ever sang karaoke by myself. I think I'm a little too shy. So but if if, if people are all singing NSYNC or Backstreet Boys or whatever it is, then I'll, I'll tag along and just jump in. She is Maya Stoy and you can see her portraying the role of Courtney in Netflix's new thriller Fatal Affair starring Nia Long and Omar Epps set to release on July the 16th. Maya, thank you so much for giving us some thank of your time. You. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. It was such a pleasure. All right, and so then. Enjoy the movie. Yeah. Stoyan from Fatal Affair, and you are watching The Arroyo Show.